Greetings and praise the Lord, Facebook family, social media platforms, whatsoever you may be in this video on. I wanted to come to you briefly this afternoon once again, speaking upon the topic, the emotional me, part two, uh, the emotional me. And many times it, uh, this message is relating to um, many times the emotions of things that we don't understand that. It's kind of bubbling up in the midst of us and why sometimes we become emotional. And um, so, uh, you know, uh, ways we, we, with things we don't really understand and, um, you know, antsy with things in life and sometimes disturbed with things in life and we don't really uh, understand why we are actually acting out in the way that we are. Um, by the way, I am under the My Father's House Church Ministry covering with Pastor Maggie Lynch is the presiding bishop of the house. I'm um, just uh, antsy to get through this because I want to begin to talk about uh, the things of revelation. So many things are just happening now and so many things are beginning to manifest right now. I just wanted to begin to get into that topic and I will be coming to you and some of the uh, form, um, next upcoming broadcasts of what the Bible says about the final days and just bringing you um, uh, from some of the texts that we used in the seminary when I was studying at the Bible College here in Rocky Mount. Uh, these are some of the books which we use, what the Bible talks about, the revelation and revealing of things to come. And I just wanted to uh, basically, hey, Cusso, good to see you viewing. Praise the Lord. I wanted to uh, speak to you briefly on some of these things, but this one is referring to the emotional me, the emotions of me, and why sometimes we are just vented out and we don't understand why we act in certain ways. I'm going to be coming from you from the, the text of Matthew, the 11th chapter, 28th and uh, 30th verse, and it reads as follows. This is the King James Version. It says, Come to me, all ye that labor and are head in labor, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn of me. See, the thing is, first of all, we got to take the yoke of God because there are many yokes and things that we are yoked up against, which begin to stress us and cause us to put a lot of energy and anxiety because we're trying to figure out why did we had to go through things in life? Why did, you know, this one do this to me? And why did that do that to me? And we're trying to sort out all these pieces when in terms, God uses many things in his hands as tools to guide us basically to him. And when you can allow the things that God had used as tools to be your, your guide and to be your, your steer, it's like a, a boat in the midst of a waters. There are all types of waters. Sometimes they're calm waters. Sometimes they're choppy waters. Sometimes the waves are just so overwhelming that it seems like it's just going to destroy the ship. So God allowed many things in the bringing of our lives to basically draw us to him. And we become emotional because of the events. And we begin to compare ourselves many times to the others that are around us. Just, you know, saying that because they got this or since you didn't have that, they have some type of advantage over you in life. But the Bible says here, take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. See, sometimes we think just because things are going on in our life that God is either mad at us or God don't love us. And it's because we don't know and we're not familiar with the nature of God and we're not familiar with the character of God. But God says for the reason he came was to lay his life down so we may have life. And that we may have that life eternal. So he said, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly. And you shall find rest for your soul. And that's the key word right there. We all desire to find rest. Sometimes with us and life, it seems like the whole time in life, you are constantly fighting against what seems to be as wins. And your life is always in a struggle. And things are not seem where it just kind of laid down as it looked like for some others where there might be a red carpet laid out for them. And it seems like some doors are just open 
for certain people. He said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We must realize that we don't, first of all, know everything. We don't have the answers for everything in life. And we don't have everything in life figured out. When you come to the conclusion that you don't know everything and you don't have it have life figured out, you know, then you are in a good spot. But when you are still on the wheel trying to figure out uh, everything, you're still, still trying to work out every scenario, and you're not seeking God for the answers in your life, you know, then you will always be in a place where you are trying to figure out things and you're always searching for things. And many times, all this had to come this way. Many times when we are trying to figure out all the voids in life, we kind of put the wrong things into the equation. Figure that if I had this or if I do this or if I had her, if I had him or if I had this particular thing or that particular thing, then my life would be made complete. When all terms, there'll be many things in the earth that will constantly have us always trying to implement and put things. And this is what I call or refer to as the God of things. Because, see, sometimes people put things in life to try to sub subdue the voids in life. And when we try to replace those voids with a longing that our soul and our spirit has for God, it would never be complete. You must determine every man that either I would carry the weight or uh, I will basically shift that weight and, and give it to God. I need insight on my mess. I need insight on my mess. I need insight on the woes in my life. I need insight on the things that I am facing, the opposition in life. I need insight. And only God can give me insight. Sometimes we could go to people and God may have people to come into your life that will have basically share informative information to basically point you in a particular direction that you may have the edge on a situation. But only God could see the full uh, outcome and the full journey of what you would be going against and what would be what you would be up against in life. You know, and many times. We don't desire to seek God because God is a spirit. And the Bible says they that worship him or those that come to him must first come to him in spirit and in truth. So until we have uh, the mind of Christ, that is the Holy Spirit that is in us, that's renewing our mind and ruin, uh, renewing the affections of the heart, then basically we are, are basically seeking or searching with emotion. And emotion is based on the things that are going on, just like happiness and happen, happiness and hap happening, uh, happiness and happening is based on your happen when your your happiness is based on what is happening, and when your when your happiness is based on what's happening, the things that are going on in your life detects um, how your emotions are, how you would be if things aren't going right, then you feel down. If things are going perfect, then you're happy. So we, we, don't, we don't want to be of a people where life is basically just kind of messing us around and just shifting us all over the place. We have had people to try to point us, point out that when you've been around people that's always trying to uh, point out the imperfections in your life and these things agitate or irritate you. Uh, you know, when, what do you do when you realize um, that it puts an awe and a doubt on the curiosity, you know, sometime in our life where we begin to ask ourselves, am I this way? When people are always trying to point out some of the faults or the things that are within, in, well, that are within us, and we are trying to basically go around people to be accepted, you know, to just fit into society. And then sometimes when you're around these people, they are pointing out the emotional uh the, the things that you are insecure about uh, for, for uh, a lack of words. You know, they are trying to put out this thing. And sometimes these things put an emotional uh, trauma, a physical trauma in our life, a psychological trauma. But the, the thing we, we must uh, 
realize what do you do with that emotion? What do you do with it? When you feel these voids in our life, when we have these pressures, because we all in life have dealt with some type of peer pressure. We are all in life have been, been uh, dealt with some time in life where you feel like you're either accepted or either you're rejected. And no one really wants to never feel rejected or, or people. We don't want to re feel rejected or the ones that we feel care about us or love us. So this is a heavy emotion that people sometimes carry around in their hearts. And it drives a lot of people to doing things physically because we don't know what to do with that emotion that is in us. So sometimes, some things when people have so felt uh, hard emotions, you know, some things that are, are so heavy that they feel like they can't share it with anybody. They don't, they wouldn't want this uh, so-called secret to get out to anybody because basically they have concealed this thing and it's become like a root. Sometimes things become like a bitter root because of things that you went through in your childhood. So, you know, God said that he came, just as I read prior, and, and he said we, when we are heavy laden and we have the emotion, that there are things that we need to lay a rest that are in our insides that many times people are carrying around and they just become, since they have these things that they built with, uh, dealt with in their childhood and we didn't know what to do with them because just as I said, they mess with your uh, emotional, their, their emotional trauma, then physical trauma and psychological trauma that people have dealt with in their upbringing, in our childhood, and things that just mess with you emotionally to the point where you just become a certain way. And some people say, this is just the way I am. But do you know when you say that this is just the way that I am, it points to the fact that you realize that there is another way. When you say this is the way, when God says there is a way in Proverbs 14 and 12, that seen it right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So, you know, actual, in, in actuality, there's some things that have just messed us up emotionally and just traumatized us in our upbringing. And we need to die to those emotions because those emotions saw where the devil saw the greater person who you could be and the greater person who you would be. He would desire to just disrupt that. He would desire to just interfere with that, that you may have some things that when you would be your best, because there are some things that you didn't deal with with your emotionals and the, and the psychological and the physical and the emotional things that you didn't address, these things play out in your behavior where you react a certain way in your adulthood or later on in the future in your life when you would desire to develop a characteristic to flow from you that would just be pleasant. These things interact. Now you got alternative thoughts and things that come to your mind and you're thinking things that are contrary to the way things really are because of some things that are embedded deep within your, your uh, spiritual self that you haven't dealt with. And many times uh, people drag these things into marriages. They drag them into all types of relationships. You drag them into your job. You drag them into your profession. And, you know, sometimes there are outbursts or, you know, you're just ready to just flip and you don't know why it is. Well, you know, God said when we are heavy laden and we, we, we have things that, you know, it seemed like, just as I alluded to Proverbs 14, 12, it seemed like this is the right way of things to do, the right way to deal with it. And, you know, sometimes we try to uh, feel like if we hang out or we just drink or get high or whatever, it takes our mind. But many times those are just tools or vices that we use to try to cope with some things that uh, we are dealing with in inwardly. And we say, you know, this makes us feel good. But God never designed you to use a tool to enhance the person that you desire to be, that, that he desires you to be in him. Your characters that God devi desire to develop in him. See? So, you know, we we call these uh these, these vices and things, and we say that, you know, these are pleasing or it makes us happy while we're doing it. 
1 Timothy 5 and 6 says that he, that he or she that live in pleasure is dead while they yet live. So, you know, it seems as if we are having fun and we're escaping the realities of life, but in, in all actuality, we're dead because we're dead Godward. Because the Bible says that Jesus said he come that we may have life and life to the abundance. He come that we may have joy and that our joy remain. So our joy is not hitched on when we are using uh, what the word, what the uh, Bible or the world relates to as spirits, because that's what alcohol is called in, the, in that term. It's called spirits. Or we're using things to in, increase uh, um, actual, the, the mind or or come over your, your natural being. Because this is what these things do. They, they come over the natural you. And they and many times they increase the emotions of things that are within you. But yet they, it kind of soothes them. Well, you're really not thinking about what, what these things are doing. So these enablers, these things in which we use as basically crutches that we don't have to address the deeper desires or the deeper emotions within, it just kind of covers them up. And, and, you know, we desire to come to the creator that he may uh, basically put off counter, counter mindsets, counterfeit mindsets, counterfeit uh, thinking that we think of people and, and things that we uh, conjure up in our mind. And we feel that, you know, if we uh, don't deal with the deep emotions of myself, I could just kind of cover it up. When these things continue to manifest out of our life over and over again and and uh actions of our life, and we don't really understand this is what's going on. Genesis 4, 6, and 8. The Bible says that King James Version, and the Lord said unto Cain, Why are they wroth? And why is their countenance falling? See, we're jealous of people because of their uh advancing. Or many times we, we are hating on people because it looks like they're they're uh, in a better condition or something. And and Lord asked this question to the king. If they're do as well, should it not be accepted? If they don't do as well, sin lies at the door. And then, you know, and these shall and, and you shall be the desire, and thou shall rule over him. Unto thee shall be his desire and shall rule over him. And Cain talked with his brother Abel. And it came to pass as when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother and slew him because of an emotion that was driven in the inside because he didn't know what to do with the emotion because he wouldn't come to God and, and give God what God asked of him. See, when we do those things which are pleasing in God's sight, then you know, God will soothe out the things. And it don't mean that you don't struggle with things, but God does help you to deal with things because he don't desire to um, move the mountain from out of our lives, but he desire that when we are going through our particular situations, he'll help us to bear those things. He helped you to kind of understand it. And then we ask, because the Bible says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask. If we ask God to give us insight and wisdom on the things that we are dealing with, he will show us what we're dealing with. He will have it to be laid out because God is not a, a God that he would keep us uh, just wandering all around the place, you know, trying to figure this thing out and try to figure that out. But when we're in the perfect will of God, we begin to understand these things. Things are laid out. He calls, you know, us as as Psalms 23 say the blessing of God will be chasing us all the days of our life when we do those things that are pleasing in God's sight. But Cain slew his brother because of the emotion that was in him. And sometimes we don't know what to bear, uh, how to bear these pains. So we, we, we do things in the natural, thinking that, you know, we could kind of dress up the pains and the wounds. And sometimes we do shopping and or either drinking or or partying or whatever device might be in the natural because God is a God of the spirit and we don't know how to relate to the spirit. We relate to it in the natural, but yet we don't understand the emotions or how the body is emotional 
and how it how it uh, tried to search out things. So we use uh, and we build temples and towels in the natural. And we build them with the natural gods of the world. And that's the God with a little G. Because see, sometimes if you step on my shoe or you touch these small gods, you step on my shoe, you put something on my clothes, you stretch my car, now I'm ready to flip. And I'm not saying that it's, it's bad for us to um, you know, have uh, value in the things that we possess. But sometimes we allow these things to take preeminence when God puts more value on the lives and people that are around you than the things that are in the world. See, sometimes our emotions are, are all messed up and we devalue people versus uh, uh, valuing God. And he told Cain, and now they are cursed from the earth, which has opened up and swallowed your brother's blood. And, you know, you must come to face the inner being, the inner, the inner emotion. And sometimes we go back and forth with the emotion, and that is to face or deal with our past. When we're able to deal with the past and the emotions of the past, we you can't go forward until you have addressed the things in your past. And that might sound foolish, but in order to move forward, whether it's physically or emotionally, you must first uh, uh, you know, gather up or embrace the things that bother you emotionally. In other words, uh, we look at this thing in this way. A person that's an alcoholic or a person that whatever the vice may be, until you address the fact that this is the vice that you are dealing with, you cannot begin to deal with that vice. If you can't first say, yes, I'm an alcoholic and admit, you cannot begin to take the first step to basically overcoming that emotion. So until we face the thing, we will never address it or we'll never deal with it. We'll never deal with anything that we don't face. We will never deal with uh, things that we don't address. And covering it up is not a way of addressing it. And since we won't face it, but we dress it up so we feel better. So, you know, if I wear it, now we, we want the affection. We want a pat on the back from a man or a woman. We want somebody to tell us who we are and we desire to get our place of being from the notary of a man. We need people to basically praise us to make us feel as if we are relevant. Women wearing clothes to attract men, to make them feel affectionate, you know, and, and to console the void. You know, it's, and it's nothing wrong with wearing nice clothes looking, but when it's your key attention, and many times if this is what you use to draw a person in the relationship, don't you know the next person he see with that on, he's going to be drawn to that too? So, you know, whatever you do to bring a, a relationship, you got to keep on doing it to cultivate the relationship. And so time in life, we sometimes in life, we just have to, to surrender the troubles that we can't deal with and give it to God. 2 Corinthians 4 and 8 and 10, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but we're not despaired. We are prosecuted. We are persecuted. We are persecuted many times in life. We are cast down, but not forsaken and not destroyed. Always bearing and dying in the body because these things don't feel good. We're dying to sell. We're lying. We're learning how not to just get all emotional and caught up in self. And dying in the Lord Jesus that the life of Jesus might be manifested in our body. We're dying to things that try to come to our mind. We're dying. You know, you, you're not tempted by anything you're not thinking about. You're not, uh, if, if your mind is not focused on a thing, you can't be tempted by a thing. And just as, you know, if you're not telling yourself certain things, just as faith, you're not going to receive doubt. If you tell yourself you can't, you probably won't. Because if you keep telling yourself this, after a while, you're going to take it to heart to believe that I can't. Because once these things are embedded and they're planted in your mind, you will never overcome it. You'll never rise up if you keep telling this. So when you begin to speak life into dead situations, when you 
uh, begin to uh, surrender these things and give them over to God. Tell them, God, that I can't bear these things. God will mend it. He will, he will patch it up. He will give you the, the will and the mindset to be able to overcome these things. And when we learn how to come to God, and surrender these things that we are not, we don't have the strength to bear. Because God did not create us as beings to be able to carry emotions and weights and burdens. He came that we may be able to surrender all these things and give them over to him. And if we don't try to give, if we don't learn to give these things over, many times we will become emotion, emotional. And we will act out and we will be short with people and we will just be flying off. And many times we will say, this is just the way I am. But that's why God said we must be renewed, not in your natural, but in the spirit of your mind. Because as a person thinketh, so is he. Listen, this is Minister Williams. I'm signing off. I'm praying that something was said to encourage you to basically bring light to maybe some things that we have been dealing with uh, spiritually, naturally, emotionally, that when we learn to surrender all in Christ, and learn to trust in him and lean not to our understanding and the knowledge that God is in the midst of everything that we are dealing with and that we're going through because he said that he didn't put more on us than what we are able to bear. We will see the victory in life. Listen, keep looking up because our redemption draweth nigh. This is Minister Williams signing off from another social media broadcast. God bless you and share the riches of Christ. Continue to reign in your life.